poker's home for me. I feel more like a regular person when I'm playing. I'm happier and uh, you know, I'm less cognizant of being in pain. And nobody can tell that I have one leg when I'm sitting at the poker table. Kevin's entire leg was amputated all the way up to the hip. It makes even sitting a challenge. But that didn't stop him from moving across the country from New Jersey, where he has spent his whole life, where he built a successful business selling collectibles, and where his wife, whom he's now separated from, and his son remained to move out west. You know, here at the end, I'll at least have a chance to, uh, you know, to win the big one, which is, you know, it's what's every poker player's dream, so. <laughs> the World Series of Poker is taking place over several weeks, ending on July 16th. Even if he doesn't win, Kevin wants to spread the word about sarcoma, the rare type of cancer that already took his leg and will soon take his life. The same way if I was a musician, I would play a show. Um, you know, I'm a gambler and poker is, is my way of getting the message out because um, if, if I could win a bracelet, then the coverage uh, would make ESPN and I could possibly reach millions of people. And I let everybody know what sarcoma is and how you can look for it. And like I tell them, if you have a friend or a family member complaining about a lump in their arms or in their legs, that that needs to be thoroughly investigated and not just brushed aside because while 99% of the time, it will be benign, I am the 1%. In 2017, Kevin saw a doctor complaining about a lump on his leg. After an MRI, he was told it was benign. He was like, don't worry, you're totally fine to take the, the summer. I ended up delaying my diagnosis by about four months and uh, during which time I went from probably early stage two to, to, to late stage three as it went from the size of a grape to a grapefruit. The surgery only partially removed it. So he had to endure chemotherapy, radiation, targeted and experimental drugs. Even after all the treatments, he had a second surgery. He said after that surgery, the doctor said he was finally cancer free. So I went on vacation to celebrate. And on the last day of my vacation, my second cancer center basically said that the, you know, the doctor was incorrect and they told me to come right in. And by the time I had come in, it had already recurred. He says doctors told him that even after the third surgery, when they amputated his leg, hip and pelvis, he would have about six months to a year to live. After the surgery, I had another scan done. So they reworked their estimate and told me that my life should be measured in weeks, which is why I had put such an emphasis on getting out here to California and getting to the World Series of Poker very quickly. California's casinos and its closeness to Vegas is not the only reason he's here. It's because California allows Kevin the power to choose when to die under our End of Life Option Act, or Right to Die Law. Doctors can prescribe him a medication that will end his life almost instantly, avoiding him the pain of the final phases of his disease. Eight states and Washington, D.C. authorize doctors to offer terminally ill adults medication to end their life at a time of their choosing. This year, 18 states have introduced legislation to allow it. What does it mean to you to have a choice of when to end your life? It means, it means freedom. Um, it means the freedom to choose. I'm, uh, I'm less afraid of the end now because I know that um, when I become symptomatic and it's my time and uh, you know I, I can't enjoy life anymore and I can't do things like you know play poker or go outside, that I don't have to just wait and just be in pain and uh, on tons of medication. I get to die the way I lived, um, you know, which is in charge. I'm an entrepreneur by, by nature and, uh, you know, I ran a, I've, I've run a, a, several successful businesses and um, this is how I wanted to run my death. And even though there are strict eligibility requirements and patients have to be certified by two separate doctors as having less than six months to live and is not being coerced into it, some find it controversial and fiercely oppose the law, calling it suicide. It's a, it's a brave decision um, and not a cowardly one. So that would be the number one misconception. Uh, number two, again, would be that, you know, um, medical aid in dying is suicide because again, People who commit suicide, they don't want to live. I want to live more than anything. I just don't have any way to do it. I'd like to avoid having my lungs fill with fluid or blood and being drained by stints on a daily basis several times a day. 
I like to avoid asphyxiation, slow, gasping for air, and, uh, you know, I don't really want to be on oxygen tanks and, uh, you know, unable to get out of bed and having to, you know, wear diapers. And um, the worst of it really is just, you know, having your heart crushed is one of the ways I could go. Um, I could have a collapsed lung. There's so many different ways that the tumors can kill you and none of them are good. None of these sound like things that, uh, that I or anyone else would want to participate in. And yet, you know, if I was on the other side of the country, I'd be forced to. In New Jersey, where he's from, medical aid in dying recently became legal, but the law won't come into effect until August. And Kevin says he might not have that long. Do you have a belief or um, a hope for what's on the other side of life? Um, I'll be honest with you, uh, I don't, I, I'm not a very religious nor a spiritual person. I'm a big believer in science and things that are proven. I also know that energy can neither be created nor destroyed and that all of us do contain energy um, and nobody can answer that question. So I don't, I don't spend a lot of time pondering it. Do you feel uh, fulfilled in your life at this point? I had a really interesting life. I had a family, I built a business, I made it to California. Um, uh, you know, I'm playing in the World Series again. And I still talk to my son on Skype and uh, I just bought a PlayStation so that we can play games together a few times a week. Um, <laughs> uh, obviously it's, you know, it's not optimal, but this is what I was forced to do. And it's sad I have to leave. Um, I'm sad about it, but uh, I'm not afraid. Again, I don't cling to this life. Um, have you faced resistance or people trying to convince you out of it? A lot of people probably aren't gonna agree with it, but uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is my life and it's my decision. And uh, you know, I've been really clear on my beliefs for a long time in, in regards to this, so. Uh, I told you I'm goal orientated, so um, for me the goal is, is to rob cancer of its prize, which is my life.